Hi, my name is Siddharth and I welcome you to a video lecture on the debate topic Solar PV in Ireland is a very bright idea. In this video, we will understand first how solar PV panels produce electricity, in what configuration are these solar panels deployed, why solar PV is important for Ireland, and finally, why we should put on our thinking hat and critically analyze the problems associated with deployment of solar PV in Ireland. Along with the video lecture, I would highly encourage you to visit the Canvas landing page for this debate. There you will find the suggested argument for the proponents and the opponents. The references provided on the landing page is broken down into four parts. Newspaper articles, they contain curated articles from newspapers focusing on the discussions that are currently going on in Ireland. Second are the reports, here you will find commercial analysis done by various organizations on the future of solar PV. Then there are papers. Here you can go in depth to the case studies and country wise economic and technical analysis done by researchers. And finally, in the video section, you will find out how solar PV works and why it is not a good idea to rely on a single source of electricity generation. Now let's focus on the workings of a solar PV panel and how they can be installed for real world use. You can imagine a solar panel as being opposite of a LED bulb that you might have at your home. The LED takes electricity in and gives out visible light, effectively converting electrical energy into visible light and heat. Solar panels are polar opposite of LED. They take light energy as input and generate electricity. Here the input energy is provided by our sun. This sunlight excites an electron inside the solar panel and starts the flow of electricity. The output of the solar panel is as a direct current, which has very limited applications, specifically in low voltage devices like laptops and mobile phones. Here we need an inverter to convert the direct current to an alternating current. This alternating current can power nearly all the devices at home. The first deployment configuration of solar panels is as utility owned solar farm. Here multiple solar panels are arranged on an empty piece of land to generate large amount of electricity at a centralized location. The key factor here is centralized. The utility operator then supplies the electricity to a consumer which can be located at a large distance, usually far away from the solar farm. The cost of the solar farm is borne by the utility operator and it sells the electricity for a profit to the consumers. Various market mechanisms are in place to aid the utility operators for generating electricity at a competitive rate. Second important component of a utility deployment is the use of transmission line. These transmission lines are the additional costs that a utility owner has to account for when generating and selling electricity. Next, let's see some examples of utility owned solar farms. Here you can see the sheer amount of solar panels that a solar farm uses. Observe the land being used to place these solar panels. This land seems barren but can be used for other purposes like housing or growing food. This is called competition for land and we will discuss this in coming slides. Next we have a solar farm in USA. It is located in a desert area where there is low competition for land. Same is for this solar farm in India, which is located in a desolate area. And finally, we see an example of solar farm in Ireland. Here, the solar panels are placed within farms that are either leased or bought. Next configuration of solar PV deployment is on top of rooftops. This is a decentralized way of placing solar PV and currently accounts for 40% of the global solar PV deployment. Here consumers place solar panel on top of their roofs. The electricity generated by these solar panels is used for personal use. If they generate excess electricity, then the excess can be stored in either batteries for further use or sent to electric grid for a price. This way a consumer becomes a prosumer. That is, they consume self-generated electricity and can also supply electricity, thereby effectively becoming a micro-utility owner. Here we see how a battery system works in conjunction with solar panels. 
The excess electricity generated during the day is stored in these battery systems. The stored electricity from the batteries can power the houses at night or supply electricity during low generation and high demand scenarios, example during cloudy days. You can imagine this as being similar to your laptop battery. It is also important to highlight here that some form of storage solution is usually required with any variable renewable energy sources, which is especially true for solar PV, as they do not produce electricity during night time. One more thing to keep in mind is that solar panels can use either direct sunlight, example during sunny days, or diffuse sunlight, example during cloudy days, or a combination of both. Here is an example of rooftop solar PV in USA. Imagine if we could cover all the rooftop with solar PV. Just an idea to think about. Here we see multiple rooftop covered with solar PV in a residential setting. As you can observe that some rooftops are not covered with solar PV panels. This is, it is basically up to the house owner whether he wants to place the solar panels or not. And here we see rooftop PV in a commercial setting. As you can see, these are big buildings on which there is empty rooftop where you can place solar panels. I would also like to highlight at this point that majority of the buildings in Ireland have a sloping roof. And when you are placing solar panel, we look for roofs that are placing that are facing towards south to capture the maximum amount of sunlight. This also causes a problem uh, in Ireland where we don't have uh, a lot of flat rooftops. Now let's understand why solar PV is important. To remember that these are just some of the examples. Please feel free to think out of the box and beyond the references and this video to come up with more use cases for solar PV. They can mitigate climate change. By decarbonizing electricity generation, solar PV technology can reduce emission in current generation systems. Example, by displacing current coal and gas fired plants or aid in future net zero emission electricity systems where future increase in demand can be actively met with increase in solar PV capacity over coming years. Next is local air pollution mitigation. By installing solar PV systems in cities, part of their electricity demand can be offset by renewable energy. This can lead to less use of fossil fuel powered electricity generator in city vicinity, leading to reduced air pollution. For Irish cities, Wood burning for house heating can be replaced by electric heating powered by solar PV, resulting in similar improvement of local air quality. For places that do not have grid access, example, remote farmhouses, solar PV can produce a affordable source of electricity generation. The rooftop solar PV can also provide electricity backup in these areas. This trend is very much visible in new buildings in built city boundaries, where solar panels are coming pre-installed with new houses. With increased uptake of solar PV, new jobs will also open up in Ireland. The entire supply chain of solar PV installation and maintenance can provide jobs to workers, business owners, transport operators, etc. Finally, solar PV is the only renewable energy technology that can be set up in a day and give you a sense of pride in contributing your two cents to tackle climate change. At the same time, each consumer can get energy security and also reduce their energy bills along with reducing their carbon footprint. It's a win for the house, it's a win for the country, and it's a win for the future generations. Till now, we have learned the working of solar PV their deployment configuration, and finally, why solar PV is important. Now we will see the gray side of the solar PV deployment and why one should see both sides of the coin before spending it. First of all, a single technology cannot meet the electricity demand. During the course of the day, our electricity demand constantly increases and then decreases during the night. There are sharp peaks in demand when we wake up and when people reach home in the evening. There is a base load, example refrigerator, that is always running. Then there are peaks in demand, example when you cook or heat water in a kettle. 
Solar PV technology is reliable but less controllable than conventional sources of electricity generation. It is highly dependent on the time of the day and cloud cover. So the, to answer, the future electricity generation portfolio cannot be solar and its case become less favorable when compared to let's say wind derived energy which is present even during the night. Next, due to the nature of solar PV installation characteristics, a lot of money is required from day one. It can range from 1000 to 5000 euros per kilowatt of installed capacity. This cost has to be accounted into the consumer bills. Although SEAI provide grants for household installation of solar PV, the remaining costs are still very high for household owners who rather pay a monthly sum to utility derived electricity. Then there is persistent cloud cover in Ireland. This reduces the amount of solar energy that we can derive considerably. Combined effect of high wind, rain, and cloud cover reduces the solar electricity generation potential considerably. This poses question as to why should we install solar PV when the break-even cost of the solar panels can itself take multiple years and who knows by then what would happen to these panels due to rain and wind. On a country scale, land is an important resource. Ireland is dependent on dairy farming and meat as its primary export. A lot of fallow land is required to raise the livestock. If we place solar PV on these farmlands, then land competition will be severe. Farmers may have to switch to different jobs. On a technical side, high penetration of solar PV can introduce a lot of variability in national grids. This can lead to unstable grids and eventually to loss of power and blackouts. To mitigate this, a lot of investment is needed by transmission and distribution grid operators. From where do you think this money will come from? Again, on the technical theme, battery storage needed for optimal solar PV performance is of high cost. This additional cost is generally not known to the consumer as it is highly dependent on the need of the customer. Purchasing and maintaining these batteries is a costly affair and the household money should be spent elsewhere. One can argue that if we are already getting electricity, then why should we invest more in these technologies rather than paying for school and healthcare? And finally, let's discuss the elephant in the room. Do you know that we need electricity to manufacture solar panels? The manufacturing, transportation and installation of solar PV is itself an energy intensive task. According to conservative estimates, 24 gram per kilowatt hour of CO2 is released during the life cycle of solar panels. So are we really getting the carbon neutral electricity as we were promised? Moreover, to manufacture solar panels, a lot of toxic and rare earth metals are used along with cooking coal, which is very polluting. Finally, at the end of solar panels' useful life, they have to be dismantled, leading to a lot of e-waste. This waste has to be reprocessed using energy-intensive techniques. Moreover, dumping these e-waste can lead to leaching of toxic elements into the soil. We first need to figure out what to do with the end-of-life solar PV panels and then promote their use in Ireland. I hope that you all have learned something from this video lecture and I also hope that this video lecture will aid you in articulating your debate points better. In the end, I leave you with my amateur attempt at writing a limerick. Best of luck. Thank you.